Hi everyone, my name is Julie. This is Keep Calm with Books and Coffee. I talk about books on this channel, mainly books about magic, and if you want to see more of that you can subscribe down below. Today we are going to be wrapping up the month of October, which was the month of Fablin and TBR Harvest and my bingo board. So we're going to talk about a little bit all of that and we're going to jump right into it. Hello everyone, so welcome to the October wrap up. We have a bunch of things to talk about today, but I want to start out with a few stats. So I finished 13 things in September. It is October. I finished 13 things in October. Uh, there might be one more thing or two added onto this uh, at the end of the month here. I'm actually filming this on Halloween night. So I'm actually trying to finish a couple of little short stories and novella things before the end of the month. But for our purposes, we have finished 13 things and DNF'd two. And the TBR, my physical TBR number at the beginning of the month was 82. And we are down to 73. Kids, we have done a lot of work this month. So I am really, really happy with that. I really focused on reading from my TBR as much as possible, especially for Fablin. That was my main focus this month with TBR Harvest being a, a second. I also did some Spookopolithon rolls and I had my own TBR to talk about. So I'm going to do a little bit of a wrap up for Spookopolithon separately, but I'm going to try to remember to tell you what everything counted for as we go along and show you my bingo board as we go. So let's jump into it. The very first thing I read this month was All Star Batman Volume 1, My Own Worst Enemy, and this is by Scott Snyder and several others. This is a comic that I have had on my bookshelf for a couple of years now, and I've been interested in trying. Basically, this is about Batman, and he is trying to take Harvey somewhere. I forget where Harvey is going, but, <laughs> but he's traveling with Harvey, and Harvey puts out a, a message that basically says, if you can stop Batman from getting me where where we're going, uh, I'm going to reward you. So this is the tale of how so many people are trying to stop them. No, what Harvey says is that if uh, they get where they're going, he's going to spill all the secrets of Gotham. So everyone is trying to stop them. It's a really interesting first graphic novel. I haven't felt compelled to continue on. And I don't know if there is another volume, even though this is called volume one. So I might look into that. I did find it a little confusing with all the different timelines and everything. Timelines that I, in comics, don't always get along, but I did like the art style. I found it really interesting. This comic is really action-packed, but it has some really cool art, and I really enjoy this art style. Had a good time reading it. I'm just uh, not sure if it, I'm gonna continue on with it. I did um, end up giving this a 3.5 stars. This comic has been on my physical TBR since October 2022 and it counted for my bingo board by reading a readathon prompt and that readathon prompt was the Fablin very first prompt to get into the library of Hacking Vines and this had to have a weapon on the cover. So you saw that this has a weapon on the cover. Next up, I listened to Come Tumbling Down by Seanan McGuire. This is another installment in the Wayward Children series. I believe this is number five. It could be number six. I think it's number five. And this series is about a home uh, where children go once they have gone through portal doors and come back and they are still searching for that door or they're adjusting back to normal life, whatever, you know, their preference is. And we keep going on different adventures. So some of these novellas are about individual stories and some of these novellas are about a little bit of a larger running plot that's going on throughout the, the series. So this one was, I really enjoyed this one. We're following Jack and Jill again, who are two of the most fascinating characters to me in this series. So I had a really good time. I gave this a four out of five and I can't wait to continue on in the series. I need to keep going. This was like the third one I had read pretty close together. So I actually took a little break after this, but I do want to read more before the end of the year. So I thought this was just a fascinating next step in the adventure and Shauna McGuire really just, I love the way she tells her stories. This got a four out of five from me. It has been on my TBR since January of this year and it counted for Fablin for the main lobby prompt as well as TBR Harvest, uh, the attic prompt, which was to read a book for another readathon. And then my bingo, it counted for fantasy. 
Then we have The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefvater, which I reread this month. I This is my favorite installment in the Dream in the Raven Boys series by Maggie Stiefvater in which we're following Blue, who is a psychic's daughter. She doesn't have any psychic talents herself, but she has had a prophecy told about her that if she kisses her true love, he will die. So when she sees a spirit on the corpse road and is predicted that she will either fall in love with him or kill him. She has a pretty good idea about what's going to happen here. <laughs> so she ends up running around with a group of private school boys who are also looking for a sleeping king. I love this series so much and this is like I said my favorite installment in the series. Uh, so I really can't be objective about this anymore because I just love it to pieces. I have all kinds of tabs in it. I re-listen to it. I love the audiobooks read by Will Patton and I had a really good time with this. I just love the way this expands our expands like the main plot of the series. It gives us a lot more depth to our characters and kind of gives a darker tone to some of what is going on and we start to really glimpse pieces of the larger picture of the series. Love it so much. We'll reread it again. Gave it a five out of five stars. This counted for the Fablin prompt of Wings on the cover as well as TBR Harvest the bedroom prompt and the my game I had to read a second book in a series which this is and I counted it for a reread. So lots this did a lot for me in the middle of the month. <laughs> Then I moved on to Can't Spell Treason Without Tea by Rebecca Thorne. This is the first book in the Tomes and Tea series and I bought this mainly because I had heard some interesting things about it and it had beautiful sprayed edges. This is the story of two people, Raina and Kianthi, uh, who I completely forgot their names until now. Ra uh, Reyna is a palace guard and Kianthi is a sort of political figure and the two of them uh, run away from their situations in order to open a tea and bookshop and be able to be together. Uh, I This is very cozy, it's very sapphic, it's very fantasy, it's very fun. Uh, I did think the writing was a tad I don't want to say immature but it was a little simplistic at times and I would have enjoyed it if it was a little more polished off uh, but I, it was very sweet and cozy and a good time um, and I did think it was a little too silly for me at points but like I said it was fun and I didn't take it too seriously. Uh, I gave this a 3.5 out of 5. It was for Fadelin Shadows on the cover as well as TBR Harvest the Staircase prompt and this has been on my physical TBR since June of this year. Then when I said I focused mostly on my physical TBR I did up until the audiobook for Graveyard Ship by M.L. Rio came in. This was one that I really wanted to read because I had loved um, if we were villains earlier this year and I knew that ML Rio was coming out with another book so I put this on hold and just picked it up as soon as it came in. I couldn't wait. It was the perfect time and it was a novella so I decided to try this out. Uh, it was the story of five people I believe who meet in a graveyard every night to um, like have a smoke break and one night when they go a grave is dug up nearby and they start to wonder why and what is going on and they start to kind of delve into this mystery. I thought this was an interesting novella and I thought it was pretty well done for a novella but everything ML Rio did with these characters and with this plot made me want more out of this. I didn't feel like any part of the story really got satisfied for me at the ending and for me that was just kind of frustrating at the end. I liked the writing style, I found the characters fascinating and I was really interested in the story and the plot line but it just sort of was a little too open-ended for me and didn't give me a lot of answers. So this disappointed me a little bit even though you know ML Rio's other book is also kind of open-ended. This one just felt even for like the short amount of time we got to know the characters, I just felt like it just piqued my interest in them and then the story was over. So didn't love this one as much as if we were villains but definitely will read more from her in the future. For Fablin, this counted as a side quest prompt for a book I didn't know anything about um, and for my bingo board it was my next on Libby and a mood read. 
I also read Magic Gifts by Alona Andrews this month. This is another novella that is set in the Kate Daniels series. It's somewhere in the middle and I actually found this to be one of the more important novellas that I have read from them in this series. Uh, in this we're following Kate and Curran as they try to go out on a date but then uh, some shenanigans happen and they get interrupted and end up having to solve a problem as often happens to them in this series. That seems to be like the theme. They get interrupted and they have to solve a problem. Anyway, uh, this story I think is one of the more interesting and actually like necessary novellas that are happening within the series because this gives you a lot of context um, as to things that are happening in the background the rest of the series. It kind of like fills in some gaps there and also gives you more background information. Not necessarily that you have to know, but some that is really interesting to know once you get deeper into the series and kind of updates you on everything. So I actually read this and gave it a three stars previously. Like I had, this was a reread for me this month and I enjoyed it even more. This time I read the graphic audio and I think that also helped but this time I gave it a four out of five because I just found more value in it. I don't know if I didn't enjoy it last time or I didn't get all the context but this time I picked up on so much and really really enjoyed it. So four out of five from me. And then this counted for my Fablin Act 3 prompt of read a book in a series because this was a novella that's part of a series. Next up, I read Blue Lily Lily Blue by Maggie C. Vodder, which I continued on with my reread of this series. I'm sad I didn't quite get The Raven King in, but I had a great time rereading this. Again, this is part of a series that is one of my absolute favorites, so I'm not super objective about it. Uh, I do love that this once again continues our, like, expansion of the series and makes it even more interesting and kind of just introduces us to even more going on. And I think I, I, when I was reading this book this time, I realized how much of a ghost story that this third book is and how interesting uh, our characters get and how much more insight we get into each one of these characters and how they're evolving and changing over the course of this series. We also really take a deeper look at the bonds between a lot of our characters in this one and I just absolutely love it. So I once again give this a five out of five stars. Love it. I use this for the Fablin prompt of a familiar book because it was a reread and a very favorite author of mine. And then for my bingo, I also used it for favorite author. So I ended up crossing over a lot of prompts. <laughs> Next, I listened to Into the Drowning Deep, an audiobook by Shauna McGuire, and this is the story of a group of scientists who are going to investigate a phenomenon in the ocean where they believe there might be mermaids because a very infamous ship went out there looking for mermaids, I believe, and did not come back. They were never found or never heard from again. So this larger ship is going out to investigate that disappearance and we are following some of the scientists and crew members on this ship. This was fantastic. I really, really loved this book. Um, I think that the way I read it and the way I timed it out, you know, to, with the readathon kind of was a detriment because I took about a like a few day break at the 60% mark. And then when I came back, it felt like the entire story really rushed to the end. But I actually think that was more a me problem that I took a break and then I came back and we like jumped into that third act of the story. So I think that was me. However, uh, I'm not sure. So I'm going to give this a 4.5. I do think this could get a full five stars on reread because the characters, the kind of like slow build of the horror elements, the really interesting science fiction take on this was just so good. I had such a good time reading it and I enjoyed it so much, um, but I did feel like things just got kind of rushed at the end. So that is my only critique of this because the rest of it was absolutely fascinating. I had a great time. Um, just I loved the blend of like science fiction as well as like climate um uh climate discourse and kind of climate critique and the way that uh Mira Grant Sean McGuire was uh critiquing like 
human society and the way we like try to control things and think we can control everything. I found that really really interesting. I also just loved the look at like mermaids and how we um, approached that. It was just fascinating and this just felt very realistic in the way that a group of scientists would be trying to figure things out um, about something like mermaids. So really really good time. Excellent read. Would recommend. Was like perfect for this time of year. I, I want to read more. I want to read it again. Ideal situation. I have failed to take notes on this one if I counted it for any Fablin prompts, but it did count for a horror book, a contemporary setting, and a big book on my bingo board. I also counted it for the theater room in the haunted house board of TBR Harvest because the theater room had to have something to do with a adaptation or um, film and there is an element of like TV um, entertainment in Into the Drowning Deep which I found really fascinating and I thought fit for this prompt. Then I read Opal by Maggie Stiefvater and this was a reread but this was the first time I listened to this on audiobook. This is a little novella that takes place actually after the Raven King, after the final book in the Raven Cycle series and it's a look into one of the characters that we meet late in the series and I really found this fascinating. I think rereading all of these little novellas that I'm talking about in the middle of my favorite series, I think uh, I've gotten even more out of them on reread, just kind of seeing um, what the, the author is doing and each one of these novellas that I reread has kind of provided me more information. For Opal, for example, made me really interested to see where we're going to go in the follow-up trilogy to The Raven Cycle and just sort of uh, I think set it up more than I realized the first time I read it. So found this really interesting. I would give it a four out of five. It's pretty short and you need a lot of context. Like you couldn't read this at all without reading The Raven Cycle. Uh, you would be really, really confused if you did. This was for Fablin, one of the gemstone prompts. I forget which color this corresponded with and I don't think it counted for anything else on the bingo boards or my or TBR Harvest. Then I listened to Chaos at the Lazy Bones Bookshop by Emmeline Duncan and I read this because it was a read along or but like group read for Leandra's Patreon. So I hadn't heard of this book but it sounded really cozy and after reading like uh, Into the Drowning Deep I was kind of looking for something that was a bit of a palate cleanser. This is the story of a town it's a cozy mystery in which we're following a bookstore owner as she kind of discovers the body of a local celebrity when she is in a corn maze and this town is very like Halloween themed. It's kind of like the revolves around Halloween tourism because there was like a famous movie uh, filmed and based on their town and it's just like very cozy, very fun. Similarly to Can't Spell Tea Without Treason, I do wish the writing had been a little bit polished more. Um, there's certain things within the text that started to kind of irritate me. We talk about location a lot, whether that's the location of the town within the state and in relation to other places in the state, as well as things in the town in relation to one another. And it started to be something that I just kind of got irritated with. So I wish there had been a little more like fine tooth combing through on this book but it was a delight to read like it was really fun and I did have a good time reading it and I just thought it was it just really gave me all the fall feelings so I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 and you can tell my notes about what I counted for what started to get scattered here in the middle of the month because I don't have written down that I counted this for anything uh so I don't know that this this ended up being just a mood read I honestly don't know. This one started to get a little messy here in the middle so I have some more notes about what other things counted for but not this one. My next read was the Clean Sweep graphic novel adaptation and this was by Ilona Andrews again and then adapted into a graphic novel version and I don't have a lot to say about this one because I've talked about Clean Sweep a lot on my my channel and about how much I love this series. It's a like sci-fi fantasy blend about inns on earth that are waypoints and the innkeepers that take care of them, mainly Dina and Nabit. 
Dina DeMille, who is our main character, and sort of how she takes care of our cat, our, the in as well as a cast of characters that you know keep showing up and it's a delightful series I really love it the adaptation was really fun it gave me even more like visual representation of what's going on because sometimes you can lose track of that and I had a really good time reading this this is only about the first half of the first book so I'm really interested to see if we get more adapted but this was a delight to read I really enjoyed the art style and I will be continuing on if there's more and I believe I counted this for a prompt that had something transparent on the cover because um Dina is like doing a spell and you can see through like the spell is there but you can see through the spell so I don't remember what part of Fablin that was but it was a transparent item on the cover and then I gave it a four and a half out of five stars because I really really enjoyed this I also reread Persuasion this month by Jane Austen, which is one of my favorite books of all time. I reread this every fall and I had a really good time doing so this month. Uh, this is about Anne Elliot, who is a part of a noble family in England and her family is splitting up because they have to rent their house and through a series of circumstances she ends up in company with a man named Frederick Wentworth that she was engaged to about eight years ago but then they broke off their engagement and now they're meeting again for the first time since then and it's I love this book. I just love Anne so much. I am an Anne and I have a really good time every time I read this. I learn something new I feel like every time and I just really enjoy the story than the dynamics of the characters. I will say that the first half is a bit slow if you are reading this for the first time. The first half is quite slow but then once you get to the second half of the book things really pick up and get interesting and I just love how this is like little character studies throughout the entire thing. I love this book. I give it a five out of five. As far as readathon prompts, I use this for the other staircase in the haunted house for TBR Harvest, and I used it for my free space on my bingo board because it's it was a free space and it didn't fit anywhere else. Next up was A Nobleman's Guide to Seducing a Scoundrel by KJ Charles. This is the second book in the uh, Secret Lives of Country Gentlemen series. These are queer historical romances in which we are following a couple of characters that, how do I explain this? We're following a character that we met in the first book and this is years and years later. So we're kind of following up the events of the first book and kind of have a companion novel here to kind of wrap things up. I thought the connection between these two books was pretty weak actually. Uh, this became after reading the first book in this like companion series a couple of years ago and then reading this now I was super lost as to what was going on and I don't think that was intentional and I don't know that I should have had to reread a companion novel before reading this one but basically things got really convoluted in the like context of the story um you were supposed to be like familiar with one of these characters because he appears in the other book and I felt like I was getting really confused about who he was. So while I did like the plot of this story, I didn't think the romantic relationship was the strongest that I've read from Charles. And I also didn't find the, like I said, the connection between the stories super strong. So this one is going to get a three out of five for me. It, I did think about DNFing it at one point in the middle of the, of the book, but, um, I, can, I continued on and I didn't have a terrible time reading it. Um, it just was not my favorite from Charles. This counted for a lot of things on my bingo board, both a red cover, I finished a series, it was a past setting, and it also counted for read a book with my coffee because I read this over the weekend and had my coffee cup while I was reading this. This counted for something that I was able to manipulate a prompt for within the rules of the game and uh, so I changed a prompt to say that it had a nature element on the cover rather than a shiny element of the cover. Then I have two DNFs for the month. The first is Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. This is the first book in the Expanse series and I am sad to DNF this, but I think this is going to be something I DNF and maybe come back to in the future, but I am probably going to unhaul this copy and take it off of my TBR for now. This is a 
sci-fi space opera and while the premise was interesting to me I am much more of a character driven reader than I think this book is going to be. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who has read it and knows my reading taste like really well and she was kind of cautioning me that this probably isn't exactly my type of book so I might try the show eventually and then try the book again but uh I'm thinking this might not be for me. I had kept trying to read it like I was reading it but every time I would read a bit of it I'd put this book down for like several days and not have any drive to go back to it and usually that means that I am just being stubborn and not wanting to admit that I am going to DNF a book so after realizing that I was like I don't think I'm enjoying this I think I'm going to DNF the book. So unfortunately that was the case for this one. Then I also DNF'd How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix, which is disappointing. <laughs> I have read one five star from uh, Grady Hendrix, which was uh, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Killing a Vampire. And then I DNF'd, no I didn't, I gave a three star I believe to the Final Girl Support Group and now I have DNF'd this book. So this one is about a set of siblings who lose their parents through a series of circumstances and the daughter has to come back to their hometown in order for them to sort through their uh, family matters and it was simply <laughs> too much drama for me. Uh, I, I really did not, I can deal with not liking a character or two but I have to have someone to root for and I personally couldn't find anyone to root for in this book. I found everyone kind of terrible and I was really frustrated with everyone and then the puppet element got introduced and for me that was just the breaking point because uh, I was having an interesting time with this book. I was doing okay and then we got to that point and I was just like no I don't think this is gonna work. So Mainly it was the characters, but then it was also a little bit the puppets. So as far as readathons, this counted for the TBR Harvest Haunted House for the seance room. And even though I DNF'd it, I made an attempt on this. And since Haunted House or TBR Harvest isn't competitive, I still counted it for the prompt. And then I didn't use this for anything else. Hello everybody. So during this recording, I forgot to show you my completed bingo board. And I also sort of dropped off telling you when things uh, were on my TBR, like how long those books were on my physical TBR. So we're going to try to keep improving that. But I wanted to show you this completed board because I'm really proud of myself for getting this much of the board completed this month. Uh, I think I did everything except go to a new copy shop. And I could have cleared a weekend to do this, to-do list but it did not keep track of this so I didn't feel right checking it off but I did a lot of other stuff and I read a lot of good books so this was a really successful month a really great month I think the readathon gods were just really kind to me this month and the bingo board gods because like so much of what I finished overlapped between the readathons I was doing and also the very last book that I was trying to finish for Fablin and I didn't finish, I found out like fit for a prompt that I didn't know it fitted for as I was reading it here in November. So I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So much of this overlapped. So I had, a, I was really lucky that way. Uh, but anyway, this is my board. I had a great time and now we will go back to past me to say goodbye. But that is everything that I read in the month of October. This month was an, an awesome reading month for me. Thank you so much to Margaret and Leandra for running such fantastic readathons. Uh, I was a co-host for Fablin, so I was mostly focused on Fablin for the month, but I also kind of tied TBR Harvest in, and both of these readathons made it so that you could, you know, kind of work in your own way and kind of, you know, combine them if you wanted to. It worked out really well for me personally and just thank you to you both for making that possible. It's such a good time participating in both of these this month and I can't wait to do it again if they ever coincide or when you run them again or if you do. No pressure, just put it out there. But that is everything for me today. If you have any thoughts or feelings or want to share anything about the books that I talked about, please let me know down below. If you're not feeling chatty and you just want to leave me a fall themed emoji like a pumpkin, a ghost, a werewolf, or maybe just a leaf, let me know down below. Um, but that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!